Hey everyone, it's Vosk. I'm here with Tails. You're watching the Vosk Coin YouTube channel, and today I'm going to show you why the Ledger Nano S is the best cryptocurrency hardware wallet, a full fledged review, as well as a quick setup tutorial on how to send and receive, shown with Zencash. If you've been following the Vosk Coin channel for a while, you'll know that. A couple months ago, we reviewed the Ledger Blue, which I was super stoked about. Unfortunately, if you watch the review, it's actually a letdown. But in the tutorial video, if you watch that, it'll kind of be like a slowed down version of today's because today is a mix of a review and a tutorial. So I'm going to run through the tutorial basics real quick, show you how to use it. Zencash was recently finally added to the Nano S, and I am stoked because, again, if you guys are following the channel, you know that we've been into Zencash since, well, before it was cool. Anyway, enough of the nonsense. Let's get to the actual review. So, you check out the packaging. Look at this, look at that. Apple inspired, very nice. Just feels good in the hands. Absolutely feels good. It looks good. Highest quality wallet packaging by far that we've dealt with. And we've reviewed a handful of wallets. You open it up and you know, it's the USB, it's, it's a little underwhelming, but it's nice. Also, that it's a small footprint. And it's cool that it has this piece that spins around and covers the screen. So if it's in your bag or whatever, there's less likelihood that it's going to get opened up and have the screen smashed and be pretty useless. Good news is, is that, you know, this is just a tool. The actual wallet is created. Well, it's created client side, you know, on this. And it gives you a 24 character seed. All you need to do is maintain that in a safe, secure place. You could eat this, lose it throw it on the highway, whatever. I don't know why you guys would ever do that. But if, let's say that happened, then all you need is your code and you can recover your wallet onto another Nano S, which is good news because uh, this can inevitably break. So then what would happen? Because in cryptocurrency, you are your own bank. So you better secure your bank. Otherwise, buy funds, say bye. Buy everything you ever worked for. Bye dreams, see you later. Setting up and actually using the Nano S is actually a breeze. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and show you right now. All right, so let's get it started. It gives you a slip in the box that says go to ledgerwallet.com slash start. Once you get there, you're gonna click whatever you've got. It's probably gonna be a Nano S. You're gonna click configure. It's gonna give you these basics that are obviously pretty obvious. You're gonna scroll down and be like, yeah, I, I want the apps to actually be able to, uh, to do anything here. Once you get there, you're going to download the Ledger Manager, Ledger Bitcoin and All Coins, Ethereum and Ripple, if you need those. There's also a cool new option on Ledger that has an authenticator. Right now it's only on Android, but either way, it's cool that they are still developing these things. For the purposes of today's video, we're going to be just downloading the Ledger Wallet Bitcoin All Coins as well as the Ledger Manager. After you do that, you're going to and get those installed, you're going to move over to your Nano S and we're going to actually begin the setup. So you're going to grab your Nano S you're gonna click both buttons. It's gonna say, hey, you need to use your buttons. After that, you're going to need to choose a pin code. To accept that the fact you need to choose a pin code, you're gonna click both buttons and then you're gonna go up or down and determine that pin code. After you choose your pin code and confirm it, it's gonna say write down your recovery seed. So you're gonna to wanna to grab that piece of paper you had and begin to write down your recovery seed. After you write down your 24 word seed, it's gonna ask you to confirm two of those words. And actually, it's a really good idea at this point to actually reset, basically lock yourself out of your ledger so it automatically resets, and then load your key right back in to ensure that you have all 24 words correctly because you may be storing your life on this thing. So it might be good to take the extra step to make sure you actually wrote it down right because you may have had two words right, but if you messed up, you know, one of the words it didn't ask you about, well, that sucks. As you can see, we need some new firmware, so we will be installing that. When you click install, you'll be prompted on your device to make sure that you say, yeah. To do this, you'll also need your pin code, please hold. So it did a little update thing, right? Now we, we got all these options, all these wonderful cryptocurrencies. Well, not all of them are wonderful, but we got an option of all these cryptocurrencies that we can store right here on the Ledger Nano S. Our weapon of choice, Zencash. Click the little green down button, looks like a download, installing the application. You're going to need to click on this and say, yeah, I want you to install that on it. Because we updated the firmware, we actually had to reinstall Bitcoin. So we've got nothing on it right now. Well, actually, now we have Bitcoin on it. So now with that in mind, we're going to be able to come down here and install the other altcoins that we see fit. We clicked on installing Zencash, and now you can see it's already populated on the 
client side. So at this point we exit Ledger Manager and we open the Ledger Bitcoin app. Once we activate this application, we can click over here to Zencash on the Nano S. And once that function is completed, you will see that it'll start synchronizing. And it's a little bit slower the first time because it's actually setting up your wallet. But as you saw, it's not actually all that slow. This sending and receiving tutorial is going to be uniform across the board with any coin pretty much except Ethereum, which goes to my Ether wallet, or you can use their Ethereum super clunky app. And then also the Ripple one sucks too. But I know we cover Ethereum and I'm pretty sure we may have covered Ripple in the last tutorial. Anyway, we need to receive something before we can send something. So we're going to click receive and it's going to display uh, the address on the device. We're going to grab this address that we generate for us right here. You can see it scrolling across the device. We are going to copy this address and we're going to say, yeah, the device looks good. And now we're going to send some Zen over here. We just sent the Zen and as you can see, it's already showed up in the wallet, which is great. Even though it's unconfirmed, it's still telling us that something's going on, that we're getting some activity on the blockchain. It also gives up a, gives us a readout of the USD value of it right now, which is great to see the actual amount of Zen we will be receiving, where it came from, and then it's going to my account. One of the nice features in Ledger is the fact that you can have multiple accounts. So for example, I could have, you know, quarter two mining earnings and I could send all my mining earnings to this account for that period. I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why you'd set up an account. Maybe that's just an idea or you could have one that, you know, stuff you bought into, stuff you mined, or, you know, maybe if you contract out for crypto, you could have your earnings in a specific account. You get a couple options here. Obviously we're choosing Olive, that's every time. And we you know we could add this and we'd get that account. Once you add that account, it'll pop up right here. As you can see, we have my account, which is just our basis account. And then we'll click over here on accounts and we can get, you know, whatever you want, whatever you named it. And then you can send and receive specifically from this account. And then you go back here, you're going to get an overview of everything you've got going on. So the Zencash confirmed. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to actually send the Zencash. You could put in a specific amount or click the max amount, which is a nice little feature to have. And we're going to put in, you know, whatever recipient address you want to send it to. Hi is going to give you the standard Zencash transaction fee, which is going to be plenty, and it's really not that expensive of a fee. Then you just click send, and you'll notice we're also sending it to ourselves. You can see we're verifying the transaction. With that, it's going to pop up on the Ledger wallet. It just showed us the amount, and we're gonna say, yeah, that's the right amount. And we are good to go. Once you send, you'll quickly get this message, and you can see it's already sent, and <laughs> it's right back because we sent to the same address but the actual function there is one and the same. So you all have it, it's pretty simple to actually use this wallet. Thus, one of the reasons why it is the best cryptocurrency hardware wallet. If you're wondering about other coins, the process is gonna be the exact same for all of them, except for Ethereum and Ripple, which again, refer to the Ledger Blue video. So as you saw, setting up the Nano S is pretty simple, pretty easy. Sending and receiving with it is, as I said before, a breeze. And now I've got my Zen Cash locked down between lock and key. Well, it was always locked and keyed, but now it's an even bigger, safer vault. So there is one massive negative. This isn't just a review of all pros. There's a massive negative of the Nano S, which isn't as negative as it was on the blue, but still I'm running into the same issue here. You know, they boast that you can store all these coins and that's awesome, sick, amazing, hell yeah. Yeah, freaking stoked, man. But you're gonna have to pick your favorites because this doesn't have the space needed to actually store all of those coins on here. So you're gonna have to pick your favorite coins, you know, depending on the actual wallet, you're probably gonna get about five choices or so. And with that, if you want to have more cryptocurrencies locked down on hardware wallet, well guess what? Ledger stoked because you're gonna be back to buy another one. And quite honestly, depending on how much crypto you have and how paranoid you are and whatever, I guess that's gonna be relative for, you know, what you actually view as a lot. but. I like to actually have a couple of these so if one is ever lost, compromised, whatever, you know, I have another one just kind of spreading it out. That way, if I'm a super genius, I lose my Nano S, lose my recovery seed, well, at least I didn't lose everything, right? But then again, if I can't be trusted to secure one, how can I secure two? But seriously, the more important part is that if you want to lock down, say, 10 cryptos on harder wallets, you're going to need two. Simple. 
or actually that's a good point because I saw that guy who wanted to comment and he didn't think I was gonna say this you can take the coins actually on and off and they'll still be secured you know in, essentially in the same wallet so let's say I had Zencash and I put Zencash on here but then I also wanted to store Zcash I didn't have enough room so I took the Zencash app off and then I added the Zcash app and I set it up got my address got my Zcash in there but then I was like oh you know what I want to send some Zen or whatever so then I take that Zcash app off and then I put the Zencash app back on and now I can access those funds and they didn't just vanish or go away so that's actually a very good tip so technically you don't really need to but as far as you know day-to-day -day usability it depends on what you want to tinker with your stuff it could be beneficial it could be a waste of money to you that's going to depend on you. One other note that I think is interesting that I didn't cover in the beginning on the package content part was the simple fact that this isn't any kind of tamper-proof seal and they boast that the key is generated right there using a cryptographic function on the spot. So, you know, essentially, even if your box is open, you're safe, but why would you why wouldn't you just return to Amazon and get a box that is shrink-wrapped? I don't know, that's up to you. What else is up to you is to make sure that you subscribe, leave a comment below, tell me what you thought about the video, what you liked, what you didn't like, and tell us what coins you wanna see added to the Nano S because the uh, Monero is gonna be added pretty soon and we are stoked about that because Monero has been plagued with so few wallet options for so long. Pretty much just my Monero and then finally their GUI wallet is actually pretty sweet now, at least as, as far as I'm concerned, but other people are having some issues. Personally, I'm not. Either way, I'm absolutely stoked to see it come into the Nano S, so that's the one that I would comment below. But comment below and tell me what coins you know are coming soon or you'd like to see added. And with all that said, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. I'll be home.